This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another stream of The Fruit of Grisea. Happy Saturday to you all, or whatever day you're, it is, if you're watching this on YouTube. So I gotta say, when I went into this game, I knew it was going to be inappropriate, per se, but I didn't... I knew it was rated M. I didn't think it was going to be rated M because of a lot of this, like, sexual content or, like, dirty jokes. I was thinking it was going to be more violence, which is what I was preparing for, because, again, the DDLC mod that was, like, the, paid the homage to this was... It wasn't like this. It was just a lot of, like, high-intense action scenes, which I really liked. Hopefully we'll get more of those. Another thing that I've learned is if you go to Configuration... And then system, I believe. Nope, not system. Uh, text is it? No, no. Sound. Yeah, you can apparently pick a voice for the main menu. So it defaults to Yumiko, apparently. You can also do Amine. Michiru. Makina. Sachi. Uh, pr the principal. And apparently, JB. Hmm, out of all these, we're going with Sachi. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Sachi. Anyhow, it's time for stream number three. Not really sure what's going to happen. Hopefully, things will get um, less weird. But I have a feeling they're going to get more weird, not less weird. Let's go. Yep, we're loading that save. Uh, yes. She's drinking the weird, uh, 100% vitamin C juice, eh? You're still doing that, lady? Yeesh. If you hate it so much, then stop doing it. Several days after the cold incident in the dormitory... Once again, I encounter Michiru drinking something sour in the lobby. From the way she's writhing in agony, she doesn't seem to have gotten used to it in the least. Why are you so caught up on drinking sour veins? You don't seem to enjoy them. Do you enjoy making yourself miserable? <laughs> Maybe. If this is just one facet of a deeper masochistic fetish, I'll have to demonstrate a certain level of acceptance and understanding. Um... No. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think that's true. What? Who, pub who published a thesis like that, and where? I like to think that I have a basic familiarity with the benefits of vitamins, at least. Vitamin C's effects are so famous that I'm actually surprised to hear anyone was still research researching it. I know what vitamin C is. It helps if you don't get enough sun. It's not making you smarter. Sardines? The head of tuna? Sardines, tuna, and a positive effect on the intellect. I think I get it. Um, I think someone's a little self-conscious about their intellect. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> How would I regret that? Unfortunately, judging from the way she's confusing vitamin C with DHA, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But to explain her mistake here and now would be too cruel. No, it wouldn't. It would be more cruel to just let her continue believing falsities. I'm, sur I'm sure she'll naturally discover the truth herself someday. Well, you may not be capable of teaching me much at the moment, but I'm counting on you to help me out if I get sick. We're being nice to her now, which is nice. Don't worry about it. You just keep up the vitamin C intake and regular sleep patterns, for everyone's sake. <laughs> oh, brother. Spitting out a venerable Sundere stock phrase is her parting shot. Michiru stalks off. I don't stick labels on people prematurely. But regarding the girl named Matsushima Michiru, in consideration of various events up to and including the current case, I have arrived at a certain conclusion. <laughs> oh, she is by far the best sprites. 
This girl is, in fact, an idiot. You know, in hindsight, I probably should have included that at the end of last stream. I feel like that's the definitely continuing from where we ended last stream, and then that... Oh, well, that's going to happen in a blind playthrough. Probably because I'm living in a world where maintaining a decidedly realistic perspective is a matter of necessity, I've never felt any interest in the paranormal or occult phenomena. Good. Such stories are often frauds, created to prey on the weakness of human nature. And more fundamentally, I've never found any meaning in the idea of the supernatural. I mean, well... Depends on what you mean by supernatural. Everyone believes in something supernatural. Whether it's, like, ghosts or the concept of God or whatever. But in my workplace, where human lives are frequently given and taken, these sorts of rumors aren't uncommon. Even a disinterested party like me has absorbed more stories than I can count on both hands. When he got back, he went delirious with fever. His limbs grew numb and eventually totally immobile. When a doctor examined him, he couldn't find any cause for his condition. They threw in the towel and left him to rot in bed. <laughs> That's because he has a good poker face. <laughs> the lights are off. No, that's what really happened. And he died a month later. <laughs> no, he's not. I don't tell lies. Even white lies. He's dead. Left me a little something in his will. She can be a little shrill at times, but I do like Michiru. The second. <laughs> What's with all these weird ghost stories we're telling people? Compared to the reason we call him Sachi and Makina, Michiru's in a state of serious terror. Amine's expression is also strangely cramped, from the way her cons... Her Kansai accent is leaking out, I'd say she's not quite unaffected herself. I did not pick up on that. Probably not. Oh, you're squealing? Wait, what? Probably not. Oh, I was wondering if my, if my microphone was distorting my audio. Welcome, Nick. <sighs> I don't know. He wasn't that healthy to start out with, so there's a good chance that he just picked up some illness that killed him. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Ugh, please stop with the screaming. Michiru clamps her hands over her ears and thrashes around, moaning like a wild animal. Though the course of her evolution seems to have reached a new stage, this isn't the time to study that hypothesis. Were you that scared? Sorry. <laughs> What's with her teeth? <laughs> They're like complete squares. Oh boy. It's a, it's a ghost story. <laughs> Is that really kindness? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> it's like the person who doesn't tell you that you have something giant green and green stuck in your teeth, and you've been going around all day like that. Understood. If and when Michiru wets herself, I promise to pay close attention. <laughs> At any rate, my story's over, so let's stop for now. There are five candles in front of us. I blow out the flame on the last one that's still burning. Sachi turns on the lights and begins to clean up the candles. After dinner, for some reason, we all ended up telling scary stories in the lobby. 
It was a standard campfire-style ghost stories round, with everyone having to try it frightening the rest. Maybe the lukewarm summer night made for a good atmosphere, as everyone got into it. I'm not really that surprised. Well, it's not fiction. <laughs> oh man, Michiru. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, Michiru's getting close up there for my favorite character. Maybe not best girl, like the one I like the most, but she's such an entertaining character. <laughs> if I told you it was just a story now, would you believe me? <laughs> Alright, got it. The story about the tunnel was all a lie. Also, my co-worker's alive and kicking. <laughs> I don't think those exist. I think they'd give up after a few minutes with your brain. Wow. Ignoring Michiru's hysterics, everyone starts to head back to their rooms. At this point, I realize something's been a bit odd about tonight. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Sakaki. The others pause at my words, then turn back around with thoughtful expressions on their faces. Well, yeah, she doesn't want to hang out with us. I don't think I've seen Makina's casual outfit before. That's an interesting one. I like it. Maybe she didn't want to deal us. Maybe she didn't want to deal with us in a group. Given Sakaki's personality, I can't imagine her voluntarily participating in this sort of social event. My guess would be that she just shut herself up in her room, since she couldn't avoid running into our gathering if she went downstairs. <laughs> I mean, I would just suck at telling ghost stories. Really? So I can kind of, I can kind of get that. Amine nods at Michiru's words. She points to a pillar on the edge of the lobby and the hallway. I see. Ugh. I'm pretty sure she would stab us in the heart if we did that. No, it wouldn't, Sachi. What the heck? Sakaki-san has a great robot in a way that he can be able to do it. Oh, brother. I think it's a great story. 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 Seriously, how many of these stupid bots are there? I've literally banned like five of them now, and they, they just keep coming back. Why are you targeting me? I have, like, <laughs> one viewer right now, <laughs> and it was probably the bot. <laughs> You're targeting the wrong person. I would feel more sympathy for Yumiko if she wasn't trying to kill us. I don't see why people would bother making bots like that, though. Does anybody actually fall for them? They're just being annoying. <laughs> That's true, I do have you, Nick. You're, you're my one real viewer right now. <laughs><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Her voice just really... Makina's voice just really grates on my ears. Yeah, 
Michiru is also at, at times. Wow! People are really mean to Michiru. That's one of the reasons I do like her. <laughs> I feel bad for her. But she does. She doesn't deserve that. <laughs> As I watch Makina, whose abusive ton and nasty personality are growing more pronounced, Sachi, whose cyborg-like reactions are growing more dramatic, and Michiru, who's growing more victimized by the day, I find myself growing a little curious about Sakaki's way of life. Come to think of it, since that box cutter incident was resolved a few days ago, I don't remember exchanging anything but very basic communications with her. That's probably what she wants. Uh, oh, your friend fell for that bot. I, I guess... Alright, I, I guess it depends on the bot. I feel like that one where they can't even type proper characters without, like, them getting screwed up. Like, I'm like, why would anybody fall for that? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry about your friend, though. I don't intend to pry too deeply, but for the sake of a smooth school life from this point on, it might be a good idea to learn a little more about her. Hmm. Hey, there's something I want to ask you guys. Do you have a few minutes? Uh-oh. He's probably asking all of their measurements. He's already asked Sachi. Hey, girl. Are, are we stalking her? Because that's not okay. When you're being followed by this many people, of course you're going to notice. Yesterday evening, I tried lightly asking the others about Sakaki's daily life and habits. But the answers I received in return provided much flimsier information than I had expected. The one thing we know about Sakaki Yumiko is that she doesn't let people see much about herself, much less her private life. Only real glimpse, <laughs> our only real glimpses of her thoughts are hints from her gestures and body language. Oh yeah, welcome Marty, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, Marty, this we haven't gotten anything really nasty yet, which is good. We told the ghost story, but now we're um, stalking... Stabbing girl, Yumiko. In short, Sakaki's lifestyle is a vaguely defined mystery, even to the people she's been living with. Without an active effort at observation, fiends are likely to stay that way. This is creepy, though. Probably 80% out of idle curiosity, Makina and Sachi ended up volunteering to cooperate with my investigation. That cooperation has taken the form of an incredibly sloppy tailing operation that was nearly given away in a matter of seconds. To be honest, they're nothing but a burden. Makina in particular. I feel like Sachi could be good at stealth. Makina, no. But at least, at least we didn't bring along Michiru. I asked the wrong people. <laughs> Sachi does not look happy with us. No, forget it. If things get bad, it's every man for himself. Putting aside any reflection on the basic question of why we're doing this for later, we continue our investigation of the highly mysterious Sakaki. <laughs> Who sighs like that? Ugh. Lying limply on her side on the sofa in the lobby, Makina mumbles a few grammatically scrambled words of complaint. <laughs> Maybe Yumiko's like me and just doesn't live that exciting of a life. Sachi flops down next to me, heaving a tired sigh herself. Well, her guard was even tighter than anticipated. After spending an entire day following Sakaki's every movement outside of class, we gained absolutely no information. During her free period, she reads books in absorbed silence. Her pace in school was always steady and regular, without any suspicious hasty movements. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she is a robot. Just as Makina says, Sakaki's behavior was reminiscent of a machine. Honestly, after after Clannad and like all of the Ace Attorney games and Professor Layton games I've played, no plot twist could really surprise me at this point. You're one to top. Well, whatever. You're not wrong, but I don't think I can be satisfied with this. From what I heard yesterday, Sakaki doesn't dislike being in a group of the others. Even if she doesn't participate in the conversation, the way she's constantly lingering at the edge is easily comprehensible from the perspective of human psychology. That doesn't fit with her machine-like actions in the daytime. In the first place, does she ever let her emotions show on her face? Apart from the hostility Sakaki showed me at first, I haven't seen any evidence of an emotional reaction from her. <laughs> 
<laughs> they could pull the everybody's a robot plot twist, and it wouldn't surprise me. I'd be upset. Er, well, I guess it depends on how they pull it off. Sachi raises her hand and speaks somewhat hesitantly. <laughs> I like these. <laughs> I like these comics. Also, wow, Yuji Yuji actually does have decent length hair. It's like the, almost the same length as Sachi's. Startled. Sakaki? It doesn't seem like she'd bat an eyelid if even if the dorm exploded under her. What kind of a surprise? What kind of surprise got a reaction out of her? In response to my question, Sachi continues in slightly hushed tones. <laughs> I need the Dongopedia back. I don't know what yakisoba is. Instant yakisoba? I'm guessing it's a kind of noodle. Not interested in the brand name or product features. What does it have to do with Sakaki? True, it'll make a sound if you dump it all at once. <laughs> oh, we've got some good thumbnail opportunities. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's noodles. Abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> Rage quitting at making dinner. You know what? I've been there. Oh, Sakaki did that. With that cool and calm appearance, you'd never think she'd be startled by something as small as that. In reality, she must have had a pretty low tolerance for sudden scares. I kind of want to see that side of Sakaki. Oh no. But I'm not particularly likely to run into her at the exact moment she's draining her instant noodles. And given Sakaki's personality, I doubt she'll make the same mistake twice anyway. Although I wouldn't mind seeing her cautiously filling the sink, preparing a strainer, and tensely draining the hot water either. Apparently, what I'm learning is that these characters have no concept of personal privacy. Unfortunately, I doubt she'll do that twice. What? Makina lightly jumps up off the couch, floating a diabolical grin. Oh no. This is not gonna end well. Someone's getting stabbed. What are you saying? Yeah, exactly. Just as Sachi says, when you consider the aftermath, trying to stunt like that on Sakaki seems like a very dangerous plan. How will she not find out if you jump scare her? But Makina's malicious curiosity seems to outweigh her awareness of the risk. Oh no. This is not gonna end well. <laughs> Are we using walkie talkies? What the heck? <laughs> Intelligence arrives from our detached unit, namely Sachi. Is this really going to work? This is totally going to end with her seeing us and blaming us. <laughs> I don't think they're going to get shot. I don't think she has a gun, but she definitely has a box cutter and she's not afraid to use it. Just as Makina says, I'm hidden near the hallway, observing the scene. Michiru, you should get out of here. <laughs> she wants to see Toad looking funny in a bathing suit, too. Sakaki climbs her way up the stairs, approaching the second floor hallway. In that instant, Makina calls out instructions into her cell phone. She's gonna hear that. At Makina's signal, Sachi cuts the breaker to the hallway from the other end of the phone call. Oh, wow. We're, we're pulling the fuse box, eh? Sakaki is taken aback for a brief moment. 
but her voice quickly regains its usual steadiness. Once again, her footsteps ring out in a regular rhythm. That is accurate, Nick. <laughs> that is my accurate reaction. Right as Sakaki approaches the door to her room, Makina presses the switch in her hand. Nani? Sakaki twirls around at the odd noise, but finds nothing more than a flower pot, sitting demurely on a nearby shelf. In the unremarkable earthenware pot, there's nothing but a small decorative plant. <sighs> Sakaki sighs in relief after discovering the innocuous origin of the strange sound. But she hasn't taken her eyes off of the houseplant yet. <laughs> Oh, Makana actually might be a bit of a genius, <laughs> at least at making p evil plots. As Makana whispers these words, she presses the switch a second time. Just then. What the heck? The perfectly normal houseplant abruptly splits it down de right down the middle. From its depths, an object resembling a giant eyeball emerges. What on earth? <laughs> Although it might be different under bright lighting, seeing this thing pop out of you in the dark must be something of a shock. As expected, Sakaki freezes dead on the spot, her eyes and mouth open wide. Something that might be an attempt at speech, and might be a simple gasp, leaks out of her mouth. <laughs> After a moment, she draws in a great breath of air. Jeez! And in a loud voice that I never could have imagined emerging from Sakaki's mouth, she screams. The sound echoes throughout the dorm. Yeesh! It's not just that she's loud. Unlike her normal, low, vaguely threatening tone, Sakaki's voice right now is remarkably girly. Oh. Although I feel a little sorry for Sakaki as she trembles in terror, this is a truly interesting spectacle. Wow. This is like a psychological experiment gone wrong. Why do you care about that, Makina? And no, it's not. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> yeah, Michiru is by far second best. <laughs> She's, she might be my favorite character. <laughs> I, I never thought I would say that the Sundere is my favorite character, but she's extremely enjoyable to have on screen. <laughs> For so many reasons. <laughs> oh no. Losing their balance, Makina and Michiru tumble from their hiding position, lying in front of Sakaki. <laughs> You're both dead. At this point, Sakaki f finally grasps the nature of the situation. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just then, Sachi returns with exquisitely bad timing. Sachi! After adding some exquisitely unhelpful lines, she clamps her mouth shut. I can't tell if she's about to, like, burst into tears or murder all of us. Yumiko looks around the faces of everybody on the scene and then glances down at herself. Oh, we're gonna die. We're gonna die. The tone of her voice is completely returned to normal. Wow, Makina! Oh my gosh. Yep. <laughs> yes, I believe this is where the violence begins. No, don't kill Sachi. I will fight you. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Also, ow. Jeez! 
As the perpetrators scatter around the dorm, Sakaki tracks down Michiru. There is murder in her eyes. Don't kill Michiru! She had the least to do with this! <laughs> She's waving her box cutter around like the incarnation of Wrath. Where did the person who let out that cute scream go? Don't think she's going to calm down anytime soon. Turning my back on the violent turmoil taking place on the upper floors, I head downstairs by myself. So we're the only ones who didn't get caught. Okay. Ooh, gentle piano music. Hey, girl! <laughs> Yo, you're up early. <laughs> we will never forget the names. Sachi, Makina, and Michiru. Now it's- oh no! If, if they actually died, now it's just us and the two worst girls. Oh, get me out of this school. <laughs> After that, Sakaki caught the criminals and beat the details out of them as they groveled in penance before her. Oh, okay, she didn't kill them. As a related party myself, I was called before her to receive my own interrogation. In the end, she heaved a truly exasperated sigh, and without any particular retaliation, returned to her room with heavy footsteps. Good idea. Don't know about Sachi, but Makina and Michiru are probably still asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sakaki reaches her hand into the pocket, presumably containing her box cutter, glaring reproachfully at me. I raise my hands dramatically over my head in an attempt to demonstrate my lack of hostile intent. In response, Sakaki sighs deeply, passes by my side, and strides off quickly in the direction of the school building. So, mind if I ask you something? As I follow a few steps behind her, Sakaki answers my question with her own, her voice hard with an attempt at intimidation. I'm not looking to tease you or look down on you. It really is just a question. Did you know everybody had a late-night gathering in the lobby two days ago? So she was aware of it, after all. If you knew about it, why didn't you join in? From what the others told me, you don't particularly dislike that, that sort of event. If me being there made it awkward to join in, could you say why? I need to know before I can try to correct my behavior. I'm clearly an alien existence in this school, much less the dorm. I don't intend to trample on the native people's territorial rights or the dignity of their culture. Not that I plan to be particularly submissive either, but still. As much as possible, I'd like to aim for peaceful coexistence, meaning I need to understand the boundaries I shouldn't cross. Good idea, Yuji! For that reason, I want to know why Sakaki absented herself the other day. Especially if it's connected with me in some way. <laughs> Okay. In that case, why? In response to my question, she hesitates for a moment. Rather than being uncomfortable about sneaking her feelings to me, or speaking her feelings to me, I get the sense that she's reluctant to admit the truth to herself. After a silence of about 20 seconds, Sakaki finally speaks. Oh! Interesting. Truly unexpected words. She's actually opening up to us a bit. What did you say just now? Apparently, my face is easy to read, as Sakaki reproaches me with a resentful expression. That's fine. Judging from the way she got scared by the sound of a sink denting, and the dramatic success of the prank yesterday, I did gather that she was your standard scaredy cat, but... It just feels weird hearing her actually come out and admit it. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. It just seems really out of character. <laughs> oh boy. What? No, he's a robot. After Sakaki speaks those words, she makes a beeline toward the school building without stopping or looking back again. From her dignified bearing, there's not the slightest hint of the person who shrieked at that prank. I guess I should leave this alone from now on. As the first step toward mending my apparent insensitivity, I decide to refrain from teasing her further. At any rate, through this incident, I've discovered that even this stone-faced cutter woman has her cute side. <laughs> 